The world stocks to use ratio for corn is forecast to fall to around 13% in 2011. Now, if this is realised, this, this stocks to use ratio will be the lowest we've seen since 1974. In the United States, the corn, the, the corn stocks to use ratio is currently running at around 6%. Right? This compares with 15% last season. The forecast fall in production, coupled with rising consumption for ethanol and, in, and increased exports, is expected to lead to corn stocks declining to their lowest level since the mid-1990s. In the case of wheat, the stocks to use ratio also fell to historical lows a few years ago. But we've since seen, since seen a spectacular recovery, rocketing back to where they were nearly a decade ago as producers responded to market signals and increased production. So this brings us to the other half of the supply side, which is of course annual variability in production. On this slide I've listed a number of key important factors driving, the, driving production. Now this chart clearly illustrates the variability that we've had here in Australian production over the past couple of decades. While trending upward, winter crop production has been extremely volatile, fluctuating from record highs to lows and back again very quickly. Changes in seasonal conditions have played a large part in shaping this aspect of the roller coaster ride. Other countries have also faced fluctuations in production brought about by extreme weather, con weather events. There's no doubt that changes in production do influence markets. A good example of this was like mid last year when the Russian Federation was concerned about the shortfall in domestic supply and moved to ensure its supply by placing a ban on all exports of grains. Now this, shot, this slide shows how production of wheat in Russia has been rebuilding since the early 1990s. In particular note the increase in exports which is the red bars and how the banning of all exports effectively takes out about 20 million tonnes off the world market. Now this is roughly equivalent to Australia's total wheat production. Combined with this with low production in other parts of the world and flow on trade effects caused, uh, caused supply on the world markets to be tight, which undoubtedly contributed to uncertainty of supply and the high prices of recent times. Now when this ban on exports from this region is lifted, and we're not sure when that's going to be, additional supply will be available to the market and put downward pressure on prices. If these extreme weather events are more likely to occur in the future, something that's probably being discussed right now in the Royal Theatre, wild fluctuations in production are likely to continue and we will see situations like this develop more in the future as individual countries become concerned about their food security. Of course, producers across the world respond to high prices by increasing production. Now, yesterday we heard how rapidly evolving technologies were influencing the way producers approach their businesses. This technology is not only being employed in production systems and improved management practices, but importantly how information is being obtained and processed. There's much more now known now as to how farming systems are interacting with the environment. And as David Brown, who gave us a few examples, yes, practical examples yesterday, how systems might be used to better manage scarce water resources, reduce inputs, or improve productivity, which is something we hear so much about. I think it's absolutely fantastic how quickly information is flowing around the world. No sooner has there been a weather event or other event um, somewhere in the world, and everyone knows. And with the current technology, Essentially, everyone is a reporter. Only last week, my daughter was texting me from Caratha in Western Australia to say that they were in the middle of a cyclone. Of course, the important thing is how we inter interpret this information. What action we take will depend on what other information we have and how quickly we are able to process the data. So not only does information travel very quickly, but with so many additional players in the markets, 
including non-traditional investors who are taking a keen interest in agriculture, such as huge superannuation funds, as soon as events occur or information about supply or demand shocks become available, the market reacts instantaneously, adding volatility to the, to the prices. Bracing for these shocks and planning to manage the risks from them is an extremely important part of farm businesses today. Of course, the bottom line for, from producers' perspective is farm income. This discharge from our farm surveys shows average farm cash income for cropping specialist and mixed enterprise farms. It demonstrates clearly the challenge facing grain farmers in managing variability, not only on the production side but on the market side of things, particularly in recent years. This variability is not only across different industries as shown here, but also across different regions and states. Just note the scale of that, where those lines are. This chart's on the same scale and as the previous slide, as, as the previous slide and, and depicts how farm cash incomes on specialist um, grain farms have been extremely volatile, both in New South Wales and Western Australia. Now, our farm surveys also give us some indications to how farmers might be responding to this variability. What we have on this slide is a picture of how, how much, on average, grain producers have invested on various capital equipment over the past four years. As you can see, we observe some pretty big investment, not only in vehicles, tractors, harvesting and handling equipment, but also observe the marked increase in investment in grain storage and, and, grain, grain storage and silos. While the data does not tell us the reasons behind the investment decisions, I'd speculate that the steady increase in investment, for example, we observed in the crop uh, harvesting and handling equipment, reflects a push by grain, grain producers to keep up with the latest technology. Such a move would help ensure that they have sufficient capacity to optimise management decisions and thereby minimise inputs, maximise yields and hence improve profits and in doing so, smooth out some of the variability while increasing productivity. In the case of the investment in grain silos and storage facilities, the ABS tells us there's currently around 16 million tonnes of storage on farm across Australia, which is quite a, quite a large number. This total does not appear to have increased dramatically over the past years, but I suspect that many grain farmers have been updating and upgrading their existing facilities in anticipation of opportunities that may arise from the recent deregulation of the bulk export market. So what does all this mean? In the coming year, we do forecast prices uh, to decline, to reflect the decline in world prices as world production rebounds to, um, from, from the reduced levels of this year. Variability in the industry is not new and will continue in the coming years. With rapidly changing technology, the speed and severity of the fluctuations may indeed increase as governments and individuals respond to information received from the key producing countries around the world. However, at the same time, this, this technology provides opportunities to explore how data can be used better, to understand the interaction between the farm, the markets and the environment. This makes, a, this makes understanding the drivers of, of particular markets a more important element in managing risk. Understanding what is happening to the changes in demand, the need to feed the world and the resulting fluctuations in farm incomes make it imperative that systems are adapted to the changing physical and market environment. Investment in research and development, I think, play a critical role in, in developing future varieties and systems. The GRDC, who are sponsoring this session, have, have programs in place addressing many of these and providing information to producers who need to adapt the technology to their individual farms. So what's the bottom line? If we can better understand the market drivers, improve systems both on and off farms, we will be in a far better position to manage the risks and thereby brace ourselves for the dips and turns of this roller coaster, avoid injury and most of all enjoy the ride. Thank you.